Okay, so I'm just going to go over how to time your Halo CE individual level speed runs real quick. So on Halo runs, uh, on the rules page, which you, which you can find up the top here, it goes over how the runs are timed and other general rules. So on Halo runs, Halo CE ILs are timed in real time, not with the MCC timer. And they begin when you gain movement control and they end when the end level cutscene begins. So there's this uh, convenient table here, which goes over when the timer starts and ends on each level. And the timer end is a little bit different depending on which version you're running. So I'll go over a few examples to show you how to time runs. Uh, so just switch to a video editor, which is a convenient way to time speedruns. So I'll just drop in ooh, this one. So here's a silent cartographer speedrun. Uh, on the table, timer begins on the first frame when the HUD is visible, and it ends on the checkpoint before the final cutscene. Uh, this checkpoint is part of the cutscene skipping, the way the game handles cutscene skipping. So it's a, uh, it's a nice, convenient, consistent end point. So let's find the first frame where the HUD is visible. Let's go frame by frame using the arrow keys. Here it is. So let's cut that there. We can delete the cutscene. So there's our start point, and now let's find our end point. So that's at the end of the video in the Pelican. Here it is. So this checkpoint here is part of the cutscene skipping mechanism. There's some issues in MCC. It doesn't let you skip it until after the fade. Um, but that's when we end the timer. Here it is. So we can cut it here, get rid of that, and we have our final time, which is 254 and 42 frames. So here's another example. It's a library on Halo PC, the 2003 PC version. So referencing the table, timer starts when the HUD is visible, same for most other levels, and being Halo PC, Timer ends when the black bars begin to grow on the end level cutscene, uh, which is the same as MCC in this case. So let's find that first frame. Here it is. Cut that. Let's find the end. to white, black bars begin to grow, that's where we cut, there's our final time. So on older versions of the game, the fade to white or black actually covers the checkpoint text, so we can't actually use that, however we know exactly when this happens, this checkpoint happens because we have access to this level scripts. So we can just simply apply an offset to another reference point to find that point when we can't actually see the text. So I'll do a quick example of that using a TNR. So instead of using the checkpoint text, we advance half a second after the fade to white begins. And that's the same time as when the checkpoint occurs. So let's do that now. Let's find the first frame, which we know is when the HUD is visible. Here it is. Okay, so the fade to white, so the 
Finding the first frame of the fade to white is a little bit tricky, so you have to go frame by frame. Just find when the color changes. So to my eye, that's this frame here. So 639 and 15 frames. So I want to advance half a second as stated by the table. So given this is 60 FPS, I want to go forward 30 frames to here. And that's our end frame. Okay, so I'll just do one more quick example. Let's do Pillar of Autumn. It's a little bit different. Starts when the black bars begin to shrink after the cryotube cutscene and ends on the choke point text, same as all the other levels with skippable end cutscenes. So, the first frame after the cryo cutscene, but that the black bars begin to shrink. Here it is. Cut there. And ends on the checkpoint before the end level cutscene. Which is here. So there's the time 322 and 15 frames. Okay, so I just want to go over one little gotcha that can sometimes happen. I've only ever seen it happen on TNR. So, on occasion, you can get a checkpoint right before the fade to white, and it overlaps with the cutscene checkpoint. Um, it doesn't really it doesn't change anything. The end level is still the cutscene checkpoint. You just have to be aware of it and pick the right checkpoint. So, usually, if you record at sixty FPS. It'll show, it'll do this, and we know that that's when the correct checkpoint happens. Um, if you're recording at 30 FPS, sometimes that won't happen, and it'll look like, like a continuous checkpoint done through the whole thing. Uh, if that's the case, you can time it using this method, and it would still be valid.